I was worried about your voice there. Yowza. Uh, okay. Uh, it's time, Bunny! It is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me, I embrace thee. That's a reference to a specific uh, Thor cartoon. <laughs> it is time, because when I, w I was born at the tail end of the 70s, I was raised in the 80s, but I would go to Lionel's Play World, which was Toys R Us before Toys R Us was Toys R Us. Yeah. And there, they would sell VHS uh, tapes of Marvel cartoons for $5, and you would get one cartoon from the 80s, and one on each videotape was one cartoon from the 80s and one cartoon from the 60s. Oh. Amazing. And that was, so that's when I saw a lot of those old, almost clutch cargo looking cartoons from like the 60s where they would yeah. just get Jack Kirby panels and they'd blow them up and they'd animate them very crudely. And there was a specific one that I would watch over and over again where Hercules comes down from Asgard to fight Thor, but he meets Jane Foster and they start dating because Jane Foster is angry because Thor had to go to Asgard <coughs> and starts dating Hercules instead. So the two of them have a big fight, which is why at the end of Thor Love and Thunder, I got all giddy. Yeah. He even had the little weirdo scepter thing and like the little hat. It looked like a really good Hercules, but anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, see, uh, I... I... I hit just right for those cartoons. Yeah. I was I was born in 63. So spent a chunk of my childhood the part that I'm not too terribly aware of, you know? Yeah. And then like that show had had its run and then it was in rerun somewhere. And that's where I saw it and I and that's where I found out about like Captain America and Iron Man, and you know there was also the separate Spider Spider Man cartoon and the separate Fantastic Four cartoon, all yep. at the same time. And people <laughs> people nowadays can just go into spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. But you don't see a lot of people singing. When Captain America throws his, his mighty, mighty shield, shield. You know, all you those don't see a... who chose to oppose his shield must yield. Me. When it comes to a fight, and it... I'm, I'm fuzzy here, man. With the red and the, the white, white and the blue. blue when Captain America throws The red and the white and the blue will come through shield. when Captain America throws his mighty shield. Yeah. You don't see a lot of people. And then, like, Iron Man had like a swinging okay. 60s one. Doc Bruce Iron Banner, Man. belted Iron by gamma Man. rays, turned yep. into the Hulk. In the early world, the ever loving Hulk. Hulk. And then Hulk. there was another, like the Captain America one, there was a. Uh, From the Rainbow Bridge oh, of Asgard. Asgard. Yeah. So I would watch those cartoons, you know, from those VHS tapes that, that were just five bucks at Lionel Play World. We are having this conversation, and it's a lot of fun because talking about the 1960s Marvel cartoons is more fun than talking about this week's film, The COVID Killer. Yes, a movie okay. that pisses me off right from the cover. Okay, <laughs> right from the fucking poster, it pisses me off. I'm going, back to, I'm going back to the pre-roll real quick here. I mean, yeah, okay. You and I could go as the COVID killers for Halloween. That'd be a fucked up cosplay. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the COVID killer and you'd be the COVID copycat killer <laughs> with your hammer that makes like cartoon sound effects when you hit people. Yes. 
<laughs> the COVID killer. Yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me, I embrace thee. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to Macarena our way into the second half of the show. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new premium direct from the Fresh Mountain Strings right to you, Movie of the Week! And this week, we continue our summer-long look at covid exploitation films of Verbal Copyright 2022, the Pope on Film Podcast, and Reverend Steve, with a look at a COVID slasher called The COVID Killer. And before we continue with the podcast, Oh my God! I have some breaking news, Bunny. Okay. Some breaking news, hot off the presses. Get ready. Hold on to your hat. <laughs> Prepare your bowels for imminent release. Because I've got an article here, and this is going to blow your mind. I'm going to read it verbatim. Okay. Absolutely. Positively. 100% verbatim as it has been written here. Not going to skip anything. It's from the website brunomars.us. And even though it's a .us, something tells me this might not have come from America. Don't ask me how I know that. But, yes. here's, the, but here's the headline. Boyfriend of Madonna. Who is the new one? So let me read this uh, huge news story for you. The ex-wife of Sean Penn and Guy Ritchie have found a replacement Brahim Zabat. The love story that has been built up over the three years, she has run aground and replacement. Who is boyfriend of Madonna? <laughs> The singer of the song Hung Up is once again are making love with a man younger. Who is boyfriend of Madonna? Uh -huh. A dancer and choreographer, 26-year-old, became Madonna's date. He is Timor Steffens, dancer ever accompanied Beyonce in Grammy Award 2010. Okay, okay. But what if evidence? If we have they... anybody listening who does rap music or electro or something like that, that shit right there. Needs to be fucking sampled. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. I... What evidence they dating? Caught on camera during a date in New York City on Broadway, Madonna knows man with a six pack of 2010 at the Chateau. Wow, that's big news there. This has to be written by the same person who who, uh, who wrote Does Bruno Mars. Does Bruno Mars is gay? Yeah, it's the same. Unlike when Brahim Zabat dating Madonna, who at the time Madonna ever admit that Brahim is his fiance, a source said that Madonna is not as serious as previously in this men he knew in Switzerland. One year older than Brahim Zabat, Timor Stefan's boyfriend of Madonna looks not much older than Brahim. Is this time a serious relationship or just having fun, right? Is this boyfriend of Madonna the last for her? Is he managed relationships with the Ainge Rage, which is too far? Let time answer. Hoping this beautiful woman's 56-year-old soon found a suitable partner for him. Wow, that's a huge news story. Why isn't the liberal media reporting this? Yes. Who is boyfriend of Madonna? He is Timor Stephens. Who is... Uh, who is of the age range, which is too far. Man. What I, about the uh, liberal left-wing media? I actually feel... This makes me happy. This makes me happy, okay? Because... I, I'm glad that the Google AI has stepped out and started a blog. <laughs> Who is a, boyfriend a, of Madonna? celebrity gossip blog but i'm not here to question what google the google ai may be into yeah you know yeah. but but everyone's asking you know i was really Madonna? kind of down for destroying the planet so so celebrity blog is kind of a comfort yeah you know who is boyfriend of Madonna? 
I think Google AI needs to be encouraged in their endeavors in the I'm world of it. celebrity gossip. Yeah, I love that. That's great stuff. I'm going to read more from that website. There's a bunch more articles. That website is famous because of an article on there with one of the best written articles of all time. It has. It also has the greatest headline. Does Bruno Mars is gay? <laughs> it's it's wow it's a masterpiece yes it is a masterpiece article so who is boyfriend of madonna so okay so it's uh summer time uh you got women you got women on your mind and really if her dad's rich take her out for a meal but if her daddy's poor and here's the important thing. Just do what you feel. You can rape her behind the dumpster. Just do what you feel. Yeah. Do what you feel. Uh, I think it's hilarious that Mungo Jerry... Number one, their name is so different after you've seen Cats four times in theaters. Yes. Which I'm not only proud about, but I'm also smug about it. Number two... uh, um. I love the fact that the band Mungo Jerry was mentioned in Avengers Endgame, which means that, you know, it's canon in the MCU. Yes. And I like that. And that Shirley from Community said it in an elevator. I also <laughs> like that. Okay, so it's summer, and uh, we do themed summers here at the Pope on Film Podcast, and this summer we're looking at COVID exploitation films. Uh, cheap films that were quickly made to cash in on a deadly pandemic that has killed millions. And this week, it's the 2021 film The COVID Killer, which currently has a 1.6 out of 10 on IMDb, which I personally think is way too generous. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm going to try and stay uh, focused here. We've already had long discussions about uh, 1960s Marvel cartoons. And uh, who is Madonna boyfriend? Because any other thing is more fun to talk about than this movie. Yes. Because uh, this movie sucks ass. But uh, so I'm going to try and not go on tangents anymore. But there is something I wanted to mention. So, Bunny, there's a review of the COVID killer on IMDb that I wanted to mention. This one is from IMDb user Warehouse Reviews. Thank you, Warehouse Reviews. And it says, actually getting COVID is better than this movie. Bunny, your thoughts? Uh, I, I, I think it would be more fun. I think it would be more fun than, than having to watch this movie. I think Biden just got COVID for the second time. They called uh, it a I think he thought he had it. He didn't have it. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? Yeah. At, 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 it's kind of sad to think that at this point, I'm proud that I haven't gotten COVID twice. Yes. Amber's gotten it three times. Oh. My daughter, Amber, has gotten it three times. And and there's seven of us living in a very small house. So the fact that I've only gotten it once, that's, uh, you know, self high five right there. Uh, good for you, Mal. Two of the three times that Amber has gotten COVID, um, Mal was sharing a room with Amber and yet. Mal has also only gotten it once. All right. That is impressive. That is really impressive. The first time around, made them sit on the, live on the couch with a mask. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so the thing that upsets me about this movie is, is that at its most basic, the plot is at least intriguing. I do like the idea of there's a serial killer out there killing people. But how do you catch someone when everyone's wearing a mask? That is an interesting premise. 
And I, I could see myself watching an interesting Law and Order episode about that. You know, it must be difficult when everyone's wearing masks, like yeah. in the middle of the pandemic, to catch a serial killer. Okay, I, I get that. That is an interesting premise. Uh, unfortunately, the director of this is a man named Jeff Knight. And, um, okay, so this is the story of his second film. And I think it says a lot about the director of The COVID Killer. Uh, the guy's name is Jeff Knight. And his first film, he did a couple of short films. And then his first feature-length film was a movie called American Pirates. And he was looking for interesting ways in New York to advertise it. And apparently the Howard Stern Show contacted Jeff Knight and said, Hey, Jeff Knight, if you put Jeff the Drunk one of uh, Howard Stern's uh, weirdos that he uh, manipulates uh, for for listens for listeners. Um, <laughs> if you put Jeff the Drunk in your movie, we will let you advertise the movie on the Howard Stern show. So, in his first film, American Pirates, it was very difficult because Jeff the Drunk. Uh, spoiler alert: He's a drunk. Uh, Jeff Knight. K-N-I-T-E, which I hate. I hate that. Jeff Kennedy. Jeff Kennedy did get Jeff the Drunk to be in American Pirates, and then Howard Stern reneged on his deal and wouldn't allow Jeff Kennedy to advertise American Pirates on the Howard Stern show. So he went through this long, arduous process of trying to get on the Howard Stern show which he turned into his second film, a documentary called Searching for Howard, uh, Waiting for Howard Stern. Okay. And you see a second of it uh, in this week's movie, his third full-length film, The COVID Killer. And just the fact that this guy is struggling to get on the Howard Stern show I think tells you everything you need to know about this director. Yes. Not the highest of high brows. <laughs> I think is what we're saying. But if I could just go on a small tangent, I can't believe that Howard Stern has gone the way of I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you? And uh, oh my God, they killed Kenny. And Beavis and Butthead saying the word fire, that Howard Stern is now the person who all of America hated and that parents said was ruining society and that uh, people protested. But now you see interviewed on CNN. Yes. Like, when did that happen? When did suddenly a big news story is about what Howard Stern said about Donald Trump? I don't care about either of those people. No. Because it's not 1993 anymore. <laughs> don't care about Howard Stern. Fuck. And it's like, I grew up. Can, can I believe Howard Stern? I mean, like I, suddenly I, Howard it might be fun, but who cares? I don't even know if it's trustworthy. Suddenly Howard Stern is like, Res respected? The fuck did that happen? Pisses me off. Anyway, fucking this movie. Okay, this movie. This movie. What is it? Uh, what is this movie, Bonnie? It's kind of, sort of. Well, first off, what it is is at least fifty fucking percent stock footage. Oh, my God. Even Ed Wood would be like, I think you've used too much New York City stock footage. And like, even Ed Wood even, would be like, back it up on the stock footage, buddy. Not even stock footage, like shit that he's lifted off of YouTube that you... No way did uh fucking watch his name, Farrell, the talk show guy. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. No the fuck way did Jimmy Fallon sign off to be in this fucking movie? 
the COVID killer. That did killer. not happen. The Young Turks yeah. did not sign off to be in this fucking movie. Yep, the Young a Turks. A lot of the, of the news footage, he did not have permission. Yep. And he's altering them to make it look like it's all coming from some local station. Yeah, and he crops it badly. He crops it all pretty freaking horribly. So Ew. that's it. That's that's one half of the movie. Yeah. Okay, is various people, Trump, Fauci, whoever, talking about coronavirus. I don't think I have said this on the podcast since we did that pretty horrible remake modern day remake of plan nine but the best part was the naked chick with the big ass yeah <laughs> i haven't said that since we saw uh mr lobo's uh star making vehicle yes plan nine way to not give me a call but that's beside the point i've moved on <laughs> from that uh, that's definitely not an engram. Yes. This movie wants to be so much, but at the end of the day, it just reeks of a group of friends making a quick buck by making movies that they aren't talented enough to actually make. Yes. And I think I've said this multiple times during our summer of COVID exploitation films, but the best part of this movie is when the credits are done, there's only 79 minutes left. Yes. So that's oh my god! And the fucking the fu fucking ending credits. First off, the ending credits were like ten minutes long at least because he's putting bloopers in between the credits. He in the hopes that you don't balls. notice the I fact that sorry. only like three people what made this balls to put blooper reels at the end of this piece of shit. You can see the best. You ain't no fucking Jackie Chan. You ain't yes. no you you ain't yeah. You ain't no Burt fucking Reynolds, okay? Exactly. Exactly. I was about to say the only time that end credit should have a blooper reel is number one, if you're watching a Pixar movie, they don't even do that anymore and it pisses me off. Uh if it's a Burt Reynolds movie or if Jackie Chan breaks something. Yeah. If Jackie Chan hasn't broken anything, I don't want to see the bloopers. That being said, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once is one of my favorite movies. Yes. Definitely the number one movie of the year so far. Uh, I, I, have real, I have real high hopes for that movie, uh, A Thousand Years of Longing, that's going to be coming out soon. Uh oh, and also, uh, there's a preview out in September. We're already getting a prequel to X. Yeah, yeah, because they made X and they made the prequel back to back. So the movie X came out. Uh, A twenty four's uh seventies porn version of uh, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and now six months later in September, we're getting a prequel. They've already made it. It's already ready to go. I'm really excited about that. They specifically want, they specifically pitched the idea of the movie X as being the start of an artistic avant garde A24 successful horror franchise. And I really like the concept of that that, like, oh, A24 will have its own high class saw. That's kind of awesome. I'm I'm really excited about it. Anyway, uh, this weekend they re-released everything, everywhere, all at once in theaters. So last night, my wife and I went to go see it in theaters, and they had a really sweet, funny introduction by the two filmmakers. And then at the end, they showed eight minutes of bloopers. Yeah, and it was hilarious. It was, oh, I love that movie so much. Everything, everywhere, all at once. It was so good. And I brought a googly eye to put on my forehead. Yeah. And I was really proud of that. There were only like eight other people in the theater. It was really nice. Uh, love that film. Okay. Uh, focus. 
focus. This movie well, sucks there's so not much. much to focus on. Uh, there's a so lot got, more to focus on. We got on. half stock footage half, and then I a swear. 10 minute credit sequence of bloopers. That's yeah. not a whole hell of a lot movie left. No. Of which it was trying to be a police procedural slash slasher film. The worst fucking police. Yeah. In the freaking world. Low budget as shit. Porn has better quality than this film. Yes. 90s pornography has better quality than this film. Jenna Jameson was a better actor than all of the people in this film. <laughs> and that says a lot. That's harsh. Like, uh, what's his name? He's in jail now for like an entire, for like decades of rape. But Ron Jeremy would have been a better actor. Yeah. Than any of the people in this. This movie sucks. No one hears an actual actor. Apparently the director has never heard of lighting or sound. No. Because no. I swear to God, I that the lighting of this film was literally just turning on a lamp, and that's it. So there's a Spanish guy slashing people only from the left. Yes. Oh, I've got it written down. Here are the three things we know about the COVID killer. He only kills women. He only slashes from the left. And every woman that has so far been killed has had sex with one asshole police officer immediately before they died. But we won't do shit about that last fact because ACAB. And ACAB. Like a, huh? ACAB stands for All Cops Are Big Shoe Collectors. Yes. That's what ACAB stands for. And it was an impressive shoe collection, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing. You know, I mean... This movie <sighs> is a movie made by Maxim Magazine fans for Maxim Magazine fans. And since they spent no money on anything... I can only guess that that is just that guy's big ass fucking shoe collection. Yep. 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 You know, Absolutely. I mean, this is a movie that played a hospital scene on the living room couch. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think they bought shelving and a whole lot of shoes to get this shot. One of these motherfuckers just had all of those shoes. And I really think that they were just going to make a film about the COVID killer, and then they thought, oh shit, this movie's going to be 45 minutes long. Okay, let's make two COVID killers. Yes. And then they just got your long-lost evil twin, uh, one E. Billiams, <laughs> and, and 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 put him in a mask, and then made him kill people with a hammer that makes uh, cartoon sound effects when you when you hit people over the head with them. And the chief of police, or whatever she was, yeah, they named her Felicia for that one lame fucking joke. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. named her, the character Felicia so he could walk out the door and say goodbye, Felicia. Yeah. Like, holy fuck. I had the that hardest hurt. time. Hurt. I had the hardest time sitting and watching this film. I'm having a hard time just sitting here talking about it. This movie sucks. Well, and at times it felt like it was a bit anti mask. Uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. It felt like it, it felt like at times that the first thing that happened was that someone made a rap album and then just made a movie around it. Yes. It, it's, it, it felt like that a lot. 
it felt like the filmmakers cared more about a shoe collection and and a, a one really nice car than an actual plot. Uh Fuck. Um this And of course, I I mentioned this before, but like uh does everyone in Brooklyn just talk like this? That is that is uh, I that's not. That's not. I am I'm possibly a suburb in Long Island or New Jersey. Possibly. Hey, welcome that to is, McDee's. What can I freaking get you? In no can... way. You could see the roofs of things. In no way that's Brooklyn or the fucking Bronx. What can you freaking get me? You can get me a number two. You busting my balls or what? No, I ain't busting your balls. Hey, fuck you, you freaking jabroni. I did kind of like Dollar General Sam Kennison. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. I wrote that down. I wrote that down. Bunny, you know I like my coffee the way I like my women. Tall, black, and sexy. <laughs> that, and it's like, okay, this is a ridiculous, horrible drunk. And then suddenly, hey, Captain. Are you on the bottle again? Like, wait, this guy's a fucking cop? Am I? <laughs> what? God, this sucks. Oh, I hate this movie. And that's the amazing thing. And we mentioned this earlier. I thought that nothing can be could be worse than last week's movie, COVID-19 Invasion, starring big, sexy WCW killer Kevin Nash in a starring cameo role. But it's like every week we hit the worst COVID exploitation film. Every week we see a new shittier film. And it's crazy to think about. But still, yes. out of all the movies that we saw, the best one has been 2025 The World Enslaved by a Virus. A pro-Christian, anti-coronavirus movie by a German child groomer. Yes. Fuck! Yes. It's so fucking weird. And then, like, there were a couple of scenes in this film that seemed like they were stolen from other films. I noticed that, like, oh, what are you two doing? Beating this guy up. We caught the COVID killer. Oh, wait, it's not the COVID killer. And I'm like, yeah, that's... Yeah, I also saw that uh, John Leguizamo Summer of Sam movie. Yeah. So... And then the ending is stolen from, I don't remember the name, but it's a Stallone movie. Before he was Stallone, and yeah. there's a killer, and he's going to kill somebody, but oh, it's Sylvester Stallone in drag. Oh, no, oh, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah. Nighthawks. Fucking Nighthawks. Nighthawks. That, yeah, was the, the, Lindsay, the, that was supposed to be Lindsay Wagner. Yeah. But Stallone dressed up as Lizzie, Lindsay Wagner because. Totally the same body type. Yeah, that's 100% you know? the ending of the COVID killer. They stole St it from Nighthawk. Stallone is a lot more life than you would think. Yeah. You know? And it's like, it's like damn, that's that Stallone movie. Fuck. Yeah. But they catch the that COVID killer. That was a killer. good movie. Yeah, it was. They caught the COVID killer, but they didn't catch the COVID copycat killer. They're leaving it open for a sequel. How yeah. excited are you, Bunny, for the sequel? Uh, about not at all. Okay, they haven't announced it yet. I'm assuming that they will eventually do it. It's not like Jeff Kennedy would ever say no to a project, I, is, is something that I think I can safely say. Okay, so... And then we had a fucking movie in a movie. Yeah. What the hell was that about? So, we've seen... Okay, so, so far this summer, we've seen 2025 The World Enslaved by a Virus, a pro-Christian anti-coronavirus movie, which was shit. Uh, but, but it was so bad, it was funny. Then we watched the Matesh Patel film Anti-Coronavirus, a.k.a. Fake Crying the Movie, which was horrible. Then I said, oh, right. this will be with, fun. With the, my pillow guy. Yeah. So then I said, oh, this will be fun. Corona zombies. How was, how was Corona zombies so unfun? I couldn't tell you a 
thing that happened in that movie, other than it was a ripoff of a of a Woody Allen film. He should have cut in more movies. I mean, that yeah. was a weird ass choice of two movies. They must have yeah. just had the rights to them. So then we did Corona Fear is a Fear is a Virus, which all took place in an elevator. Yes. Which was horrible. And then I last thought that week, was kind of fun. I, I fucking hated that movie. <laughs> so bad. The people in an elevator yelling, the movie. Can Did you the believe woman this was ad-libbed? woman to check the dead girl's lifeline to see if it was vanishing. Yeah. Yeah. I rigged the elevator to stop. How the fuck did you rig the elevator to stop? You press the button. Fucking ridiculous. And then we it watched COVID-19. Stop. <laughs> yeah. And then we watched COVID-19 Invasion last week, and this week we watched The COVID Killer. Next week, our movie next week, is it gonna suck? Fucking probably. But at least it will be different. Okay. The next movie we're watching is the 2021 film, The Coronavirus Conspiracy. Now, I have never watched this film, but I know what it's about. It's a comedic thriller about the following things. The coronavirus, zookeepers, the importance of memes, aliens, and Harambe. Oh! I guarantee you, you are not ready for this, but it, you hear all those things, and those are all in the plot of the film. I don't think it's going to be good, but at least it will be different. Yes. So, a comedic thriller, the coronavirus conspiracy, I'm just going to let you know right now, you're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. <laughs> and this is all leading up to our final film, the only big budget film that the only big budget COVID exploitation film that is out there uh, which I haven't found yet but I am going to find a copy of and that is Songbird starring Archie from Riverdale and for some reason Demi Moore Yes. Uh, really excited to watch that because it actually had money as opposed to the rest of these pieces of shit but that is our next episode the coronavirus conspiracy about memes, aliens, and Harambe and computer simulations. It is some weird ass shit, and you're not ready for it. This week's movie, The COVID <laughs> Killer. It's bad, but not even in a good way. Not even in a funny way. No. It's just bad. It's just bad, bad. On the positive side, you can look at it and say, hey, I could make that. So if anything, it's a self improvement. You know, it, 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 it helps give you confidence for your own project. But uh, next episode, the coronavirus conspiracy. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, the highs, the lows, Jeff Kennedy, Howard Stern, Disney groomers, um, estrogen. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. A but damn I'm glad a to double hear damn good episode. A rare double damn. We got a rare double damn. Well, hot damn for the rare double damn. Uh, I I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve May Lynn. And on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and Mal and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Hurry, we got less than a minute. And you COVID zombies? And you cookies? Nice. Do 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 do. Cut and prayer. Yes, we got it all in. Cut USA. and print. USA, USA. Uh, the chant. Hi everybody, it's me.